Did Apple blow it? Or are they gonna change the way humans interact with each other? Or did they reinvent the way we can ignore each other again? This is to be determined. What we can tell so far is that they came up with some really amazing and new technology, brand new stuff. They have over 5,000 patents on this new headset and the technology that lives inside of it. And this thing looks far better than anything anyone else is making in the AR VR headset world so far. And it's a huge step for Apple into the world of what they call spatial computing. It's gonna be really interesting to see how developers take advantage of this new tech with Reality Kit, AR kit, well, AR kit is not new, but it's gonna be enhanced for Vision Pro. You're no longer only dealing with the 2D world. You now have volumes and windows and floating things. And <laughs> well, you can take a look at the docs yourself and prepare yourself for Vision OS. All the docs are ready and up and you can check it out how Swift UI will be changed. There's even documentation on the new audio and video capabilities, share play experiences, and there's a beta version of Xcode for you to check out. Now, before I get into more developer specific stuff, real quick, for those of you that might've missed the keynote, Vision Pro is a mixed reality headset with a dual chip setup, the M2, which is brand new as of last year, and the R1 chips. The R1 is responsible for the real time processing. This device offers up to 4K resolution per each eye. It doesn't come with controllers, but instead it's got cameras built in to look at your eyes and your fingers and your hands. And it listens to your voice and processes all that in real time for control. One would assume for productivity applications, you could just use this thing as a large multi-monitor display that's equivalent in quality to Apple's own XDR displays, which cost $5,000 plus the $1,000 stand. Now, even though Vision Pro is not nearly as expensive as the XDR monitor, just one monitor and the stand, at $3,500, it might just be enough to prevent mass market adoption. And this could potentially kill Apple's VR business, at least for the time being, until cheaper products are available. When the iPhone came out, it blew everyone away, but it was also $499, which was really expensive at the time when people were used to getting their phones for free with a service provider plan. It wasn't until later that Apple introduced cheaper models, even down to $99. So maybe the same thing will happen with the Vision series of devices and there will be a lower priced version in 2025 if this proof of concept is successful. But to be successful, Apple must appeal to developers. They also position this as a pro device. It's right there in the name, Apple Vision Pro. Does that mean there's room for an Apple Vision device without the pro name? Or is everything that Apple comes out with pro now? And to get higher versions, we're just gonna add to the pro name like Vision Pro X Max 2. Maybe only if Apple hired Microsoft marketing team. I kid, I kid. Copilot is an awesome name. Good job, Microsoft. Getting back to Apple, it does give me some concern because the tech is so cool and I kind of want it to succeed, but this price tag of $3,500, it's gonna be kind of a toy only for the luxury market at this point. And I'm not the only one that's concerned as evident by the stock price drop yesterday after the announcement. If you were to take that $3,500 and spend it right now, what can it get you? Well, a lot of things, first of all, but if we're talking about only Apple things, this can get you the top of the line M2 Max MacBook Pro or a whole tower of Mac minis. Or you can get a really nicely specced out Mac Studio if you're into desktops. So what about developers? They didn't say anything in the presentation about uh, a dev kit being available or anything like that, but apparently they are planning to release a dev kit version of the Vision Pro. It's right there on the dev website but there will be some kind of application process and it's very unclear what's gonna happen with that. This tells me that only a select few will be able to snag a dev kit copy of the hardware and the rest of us will just have to use the Vision OS simulator for now and hope for the best. The waitlist stuff is just getting out of hand these days. I don't know if it's gonna be a waitlist, but maybe. I don't need to say this, but I'm gonna say this anyway. To sell these headsets, there must be some really good and compelling AR and VR apps and games on this thing. If there's no apps, people aren't going to buy it. Duh. And this is not the first time in history where a really amazing, cool product has failed because of something like this. The Concorde, for example, was an incredible plane, uh, but it was too expensive. The DeLorean car, it was in Back to the Future. The Betamax tapes, or even not that long ago, Google Glass. If I remember correctly, that one was only $1,500, which 
at the time seemed ridiculously expensive too. Look, the Vision Pro is Apple's most hyped product in 2023, and it marks the company's debut into AR VR space. It's a big, bold move, courageous, one would say even. I don't know who would say that. Only time will tell if this thing really pays off. Uh, okay, I just came back from a run, sorry about the sweatiness, and I realized that I forgot to mention something. There's a lot of reviews about this thing already everywhere, right, all over the internet, and you probably watch a ton of channels, but you watch this channel because you wanna know maybe my opinion and what I'm gonna do. Well, am I gonna get this thing? If I didn't have a YouTube channel, I would not get this thing. I don't have spare income lying around to spend $3,500 on something like this, which I think is not a productivity device. Damn, I'm sweaty. It's more of a consumer-oriented device. And for consumption, to spend $3,500, I'd rather buy a nice projector for that money, a nice laser projector. I know myself, and I've been an iPad owner for a long time, and most of the time I use an iPad to watch movies or shows. Sure, once in a while I'll browse the internet for that, but most of the time I watch shows on it, and that's probably what I would do with this device also. From the developer in me, I'm very curious to write apps for it. I'm very curious to see what's possible, but I'm not gonna spend $3,500 on this device. There's no freaking way. So on the one hand, I am really curious. I think it's really amazing and really cool. I wanna see it succeed, but I don't wanna be the one spending the money initially, so, <laughs> Maybe somewhere down the line, when it's gonna get cheaper, I will buy a piece and try it out. Maybe if there's a dev kit that's priced low enough, I would get one. Then there's the YouTuber side of me, right? The one that has this channel and is trying to deliver information to all of you folks. Timely information, information about developer hardware. That part of me is still on the fence about this. And that part of me still thinks that I may buy this just for the purpose of having information for you folks. But then there's a catch-22 there, because if I say I'm not gonna buy it, why should any of you buy it? And if you're not gonna buy it, why the heck would you wanna hear information about it? So let me know in the comments, folks, what do you think? And we'll revisit this a little bit later. Oh, and I, I ordered a couple of MacBook Airs, the new ones, the 15-inch ones, just to do some comparisons. So subscribe to the channel to see those. See you later.